What's up, everybody? Chef Matt Bazila here from Fidel Gastros, formerly Barley Sumeri. Born and raised in Toronto, but some of you might argue, Matt, you're actually from North York, and that's all good because my hidden gems today are from North York because great food lives all over this city. I'm going to take you for a quick little trip. burgers becoming incredibly popular in Toronto you have people like Burger Shack that have been doing like the old school charbroiled massive burger for I don't know I'm 37 and they've been around for as long as I can remember so maybe they're over 40 years old who knows but we're at Oriel Parkway in Eglinton and this has been a part of my preteens teenage years young adult years current adult years so literally as a kid i would swim over there uh have a burger that ghost kitchen place used to be a video store so i'd rent like five or six movies and then we'd uh, go to that convenience store over there and grab bags of candy and go home i don't think the menus have ever changed there's like two menus to order off of inside there i always get the one on the right i can never remember but the burgers are better on the right side of the menu go go figure you get the home burger. 100%. That's what I was saying to them. I'm like, you've always got to get off the home, the homemade menu. Like, that's the trend. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Okay, so it's always the same thing every single time. Uh, off the homemade menu. Remember, I was trying to like remember what's the menu? You get off the homemade menu because the burgers are bigger. I always get a double patty. Always cheese. I don't understand why people get burgers without cheese. I never get bacon because that's all you taste and I want to taste this burger. But you just don't see burgers like this. Like massive patties on a char broiler, ketchup on the side with fries, but never in the burger. Mayo, mustard. It's delicious. I'm gonna end up eating this whole thing now. Years back, Mark McEwen, he used to come yeah, here all, all the time. time. This, was his, all... this was his spot. Once oh, yeah. a week he would come? Once yeah. a week. Wow. And I never knew who he is. North 44 he... was just yeah. up the street. Yeah. So th he was in this neighborhood all the all time. All the time. And, and his favorite, the chicken souffle. Yeah. And one time I was talking to him, I introduced myself. He goes to me, don't change anything yeah. in your recipe. <laughs> and here's the thing, I would be shocked if someone came here once and never came back. I'd be shocked. If, if you're not from the area, someone has probably brought you here for the first time. So like, I would be like, yo, come with me. We're in my old hood. Uh, you gotta have a burger from this place. And then that person brings someone and so on. They grew up here. They got married. They bring their children. Huh. And they, you know, keep going. All right, so this is my uh, my stomping ground. This is where I grew up. I worked at that butcher shop for over 10 years. Every single barbecue and piece of charcoal I've ever purchased, I bought at that store right there. Easy Meat is my neighborhood sushi spot. Now, every neighborhood has their local sushi spot. I am spoiled that this was mine. In the 15 or 20 years that I've been eating here, I have never even had a mediocre experience. The food is always the best. The sushi is super fresh. The cuts of fish are always the best. The people are amazing. They deliver. It's just, it's exactly what you want. I'll be honest, I compare every piece of sushi I eat to Isumi's. And like any true local legendary spot, they've been in business for 18 years. Four years ago, fire ripped through this place. Francis, the owner, had to completely gut it and renovated it. And they were like, ready to have this whole fancy new space. And then COVID hit, which was absolutely devastating across the industry. But they did an amazing job of just keeping up with the delivery in the neighborhood. So it's just a testament to how good they are. And I can't wait to show you my next hidden gem. Come on in. All right, so this is, uh, this is the thing, this is a theme here. I ordered the same thing that I always order at Burger Shack, and I get the exact same thing 
here. So for about 18 years, I've been ordering what used to be referred to as the love boat. Now it's the sushi boat for two, <laughs> maybe just one. I'd say in the last four years, maybe three years, I've added the, the pressed torch uh, beef sushi roll on top. You have everything from torch salmon, a little bit of butterfish, the green dragon roll, spicy salmon. I have here some albacore tuna, some regular tuna. For me, it comes down to like three things. There is a certain quality in the fish. Every single bite that you're just like, yep, that's exactly what I'm looking for. The fish to rice ratio, always spot on. For me, it's like a no brainer. Sushi! <laughs> All right, so stop number three on my hidden gem tour has taken us to Kiel and Lawrence. This spot, Upadio, is the very definition of a hidden gem, mainly because it's pretty hidden. We're in between a driving range and it's in the basement of this building that just kind of looks like a house. There's no sign other than the word patio. I don't even know what upatio means other than maybe it just probably just means the patio. But I'm telling you, it's one of the best Portuguese chicken experiences, churrascarias that you're gonna ever try. Not to mention the beef on the skewer with the pineapple. It's fantastic. The seafood platters are amazing. Definitely best enjoyed with a group of four or more. So clearly I gotta try my best to eat as much as possible. If you really need to understand what a hidden gem is, it's Upadio, number three on my list. This is Upadio. It's like a little outdoor covered patio in the middle of apartment buildings and a driving range. And it's like a bit of a throwback to like restaurants in like the early 1990s, really. You have the doily placemat already here for you when you sit down, the olives waiting for you. Who still gives baskets of bread? You know, I can't remember the last time I've had a basket of bread. The food's always top notch. The service is interesting because they are incredibly lovely people, but they just give you shit all the time. It's kind of their shtick. It feels like you're hanging out with a Portuguese aunt who just likes to tell you you haven't eaten in a week. What's wrong with you? I'm Chef Matt Basile. Thanks for joining me on my little journey of hidden gems in the city. Probably parts of the city that you've not checked out and you got to ask yourself, why not? Because we had burgers at Burger Shack, we did sushi at Isme, and we did steak and chicken at Upadio. What else could you ask for? Check them out and uh, enjoy.